Hi there folks, my name's NovaWing24 and welcome to my first review of a uh, X-Plane 11 product. So today we're going to be having a look at the recently released uh, airport from the team over at Aerosoft uh, for Bali XP. Now of course they produced previously a version of this for the ESP and prepared 3D uh, prepared platforms uh, but then of course they have brought it over to X-Plane. So I'm here today to have a look at the X-Plane version um, I haven't actually, I haven't got the uh, prepared, uh, the ESP platform version to be able to compare that to, so we're just going to be having a look at this uh, with fresh eyes, looking at the X-Plane version. Uh, so but before we get too far into this one, I do want to first want to say thank you very much to the wonderful team over at Aerosoft and to the guys over at Helisimmer.com uh, for providing the review copy um, of this uh, of this of this uh, add-on today. Uh, we're going to be going through, so thank you very much to you guys. Alrighty, so on with the review. So um, for those who are sort of viewers of my channel, uh, you probably would know that normally um, I would actually be sort of doing a little bit of a drive-by, as it were, where I sort of grab a, a ground vehicle and uh, sort of, uh, of drive and wander my way throughout the uh, the area covered by the scenery. Uh, unfortunately, however, um, I couldn't find one, a, uh, a ground vehicle that would actually work for me in X-Plane 11. So uh, instead we've got this, uh, the inbuilt world cam uh, to be able to sort of go through and have a look through and uh, experience the uh, the scenery firsthand. And uh, once we've uh, sort of wandered through and had a look at some of these, these details, uh, we will then be heading uh, into a flight. We'll do a couple of circuits around their region and we can have a look at the extended uh, areas covered by the scenery. Alrighty, so first off, let's get started with having a look at some of the details of it. Well, it's probably the, the most important thing probably, um, of course, is the runway and uh, the uh, the ground sort of textures that we get with this for our air operations. Um, so the first one is, I must actually say um, that one of the things that I do quite enjoy about this one um, is they've actually got very high quality uh, ground textures on the both the taxiway, the aprons, uh, taxiways, aprons, and the runways. Um, so that is really cool to see. And it's not just the stuff that's done by uh, where these these are customized uh, sceneries and uh, customized textures that are done for this. So uh, these are done in really, really, really high um, high detail here. Um, and I'm actually and one thing that's like throughout all of this is that there's like virtually no impact on frames for this entire. Um, uh, this entire scenery pack, which is a really, really cool thing to, you know, as I said, it's always one of those things we could always bear in mind whenever we're doing uh, scenery reviews, is that it's not just about the how amazing it looks, it's also about how much it impacts on your overall experience. But yeah, so the actual sort of ground textures I'm fairly impressed about, I do find the quality of these is really good, and as I said, doesn't really impact on frames at all. Um, a couple of le neat little details that I do like are things like, if I can get the camera controls working, can you tell that I'm sort of still getting, getting in working my way around in X-Plane at the moment. Um, I do actually like the fact that it does include uh, the, um, the, the the lat long on all the actual parking bays, and it is actually customised and individualised for the one, so because uh, obviously things are sort of fairly close together, you know, a couple of them don't change, but they do change as you go along the numbers, which is really cool to see. So again, uh, nice attention to detail with that. Unfortunately, attention to detail in some areas is then glaringly let down by lack of attention to detail in others. Um, and I, I, this is actually a, a good point to actually sort of um, sort of put this down. Is that you know this is like a, a freight forwarding terminal. Um, uh, down the this end of the uh, of the airport, uh, so this we have all the baggage claim, but also all the freight forwarding happens. So there should be a whole heap of branded um, buildings here. Um, so you know, DHL's got a building here, and it's like, yeah, um, that's not there. It, it's not, and it's just these sort of like generic containers, and you know, like I, I'm, I'm all for people sort of you know saving sort of you know texture space and stuff to be able to sort of, you know to preserve frame rates as we talked about before, but at the same time, it's lack of that sort of diversity. Um, and the lack of that sort of personalization in the actual, um, in these sort of fairly major, fairly significant areas of the airport um, that actually sort of breaks the immersion and breaks the feeling um, of that you actually get with a, uh, a scenery when you get on closer inspection. So yeah, that that was a sort of a, that's a little bit of a disappointing thing. Um, also, apparently, the way that it tells X Plane to actually uh, put static aircraft in here uh, possibly needs a 
bit of work uh, because we keep getting <laughs> our airplanes with wings through each other. Yeah, so not sure if that's a thing that's just a, a thing, but maybe you might look at it if you can find a way of just, you know, maybe make every second one one we can have a static aircraft in. And here's the silly thing, like it's still using the, the default, you know, X-Plane static aircraft um, while still also having custom Aerosoft ones um, for the actual airport. Uh, so... Um, with actual sort of, you know, sort of local carriers and stuff like that. So mm, it's sort of a bit of an interesting sort of juxtaposition, that one. Uh, as I said, the things like, again, again whoop, wrong one. There we go. Um, having things like, you know, this uh, customized ground markings like this one that we got here. Like, this is really good stuff and good to see. Um, I really like seeing this kind of stuff and this kind of attention to detail um, from a developer. But again, as I said, it just gets let down um, when you get a lack of it you know, when literally, like, you turn and there's just a lack of depth um, here. Like, they've got the edges of the terminal buildings fine, but then there's just... Everything else just feels really bland. Like, there's just no... There's no life to it. Um, you know, I you know I, I would expect to see you know some de detritus, you know some detritus or something, you know some some cones or something or some other ground sort of service equipment, uh, sort of you know in these sort of recesses and things like that. And it's just it's just not there. Um, and here's the other thing is that you've got these ground service equipment sort of kicking here around as if you're going to be able to use it. You can't. Uh, you can't use the the baggage the, the you know the, the baggage vehicles. You can't there are the ground service equipment. Although it looks like it's there, you can't use it. Um, now, admittedly, you can't use it in the default one either. So you know it's not like you know, it's not like you're losing something by you know the, by, by putting this in. Um, but you're not gaining anything either, and that's kind of disappointing. Like you know, it really kind of is. Um, it, it's just yeah, it's just a little disappointing. It really is. Uh, you got customized. You got uh, custom uh, models for the jet bridges as well. So again, replacing the default ones. Um, you've got the, this is uh, as the airport looks uh, in terms of time framing. By the way, folks, uh, this is as the airport looks uh, at the end of 2016. Um, so when the uh, new international terminal here uh, with these uh, this white flowing roof uh, was actually finished. Um, along with this really sort of um, interesting and beautiful, if I can find it, where is it? Ah, uh, oh, wait, there it is. Um, which is this really ornate. So this is um, this is actually this is the old. So this is the old. This is like the main sort of sort of when um, this, this is sort of like an older part of the airport. The old is mostly used for domestic flights. Uh, this is where sort of people used to actually enter the airport from airside. Uh, so this is modeled really beautifully, but again, just it's it's very dull. The textures are very dull and just don't. There's no life to it. It's, maybe I'm maybe I'm just spoilt by um, developers like Turbulent um, and Orbix um, uh, and I Blue Yonder over the last few years with finding you know really innovative and really like you know living alive airports and the way that they actually sort of handle that. Um, it's yeah maybe I've just been spoiled from the ESP platform for so many years where all this stuff has been integrated, uh, but it's just it's a really bit jarring when you come to an airport like this um, in X Plane Eleven, one that is a very very busy international airport. It's very popular with Australians um, and with uh, various regional uh, airlines and re regional visitors as well. That it's really jarring when you don't see that sort of like life to an airport um, and the the detritus that you get you sort of that you would expect to see around an airport. As I said, like you see some of these things like you know as I said, we've got the um we've got the baggage truck here and we've got the um you know a couple of cargo pallets here so you'd be expecting to see this kind of stuff being able to inter interface with your aircraft uh but you can't uh the tug the the the, the de default tug um is is perfectly usable um uh, and that is sort of parked around various places um so that's fine that that's, that's works great but as I said it just sort of like misses a couple of things somewhere it, it really does and it's a bit of a shame it really is it really is a bit of a shame Anyway, moving on. Uh, so yes, uh, but otherwise, is it like it's in terms of the rendition of the actual sort of you know layout of the airport? Um, this is done quite well. Uh, as I said, it does match um, for the most part. It matches the way it looks at the uh, end of 2016 with the accurate uh, taxiways, uh, updated runway textures, uh, and all that kind of wonderful fun stuff as well. So uh, it also corrects the length of the runway as well. Uh, the length of the runway in default is slightly off, um, so that's good to know. Uh, randomly though, uh, it uh, missed out of one of 
of the um, uh, private sort of um, uh, well, not private, but one of the uh, bizjet hangers over on the uh, far side of the field here. Uh, it did miss that out. Not really sure why. It has um, this one. Uh, it's got this one. This one here is modelled quite well. Um, but the other one, which is across the other side, uh, just over there, uh, is unfortunately not modelled. Not really sure why, but uh, yeah, it just wasn't modelled. Hmm. I don't know. Random. Anyway. Uh, but yes, there you go. That's it. So, as I said, externally wise, um, for layout wise, uh, definitely a lot more accurate uh, than the default one. The as I said, it puts all the taxiways in the correct position. Uh, it puts uh, updates the runway length. So yes, very good for that one. In terms of the uh, airport buildings, as I said, the the buildings now sort of look closer to what they do in the in the uh, for the real airport. Uh, it gives you got that fun, the actual sort of local feel, um, which is very interesting. As I said, it's it's uh, uh, in in terms of um, sort of uh, a, a Southeast Asian airports, a lot of them haven't embraced the sort of the the local culture and the local sort of architecture um, as much as what Bali does. Um, I know many of the ones that I've travelled through over the years. I mean, Sh Changi kind of does now, um, but Bali. Bali definitely really does embrace the the culture and the design and the building design uh, in its airport design, which is really cool to see, and it sort of definitely makes it a, a, an iconic experience to actually go there. And that's really cool that they sort of uh, attempted to capture that here. Uh, and again, as I said, I, I can't fault them for that. The actual building sort of work is is quite accurate. It's just very just very stark and very clinical um, is really all I have to say. It's, it's as I, said, I I I know I don't know, I don't know. People might say, as I said, I, I feel like maybe I've just been spoiled by. Um, but it's, you know, such good quality uh, scenery from the likes of you know Orbex and Turbulent over the last few years that maybe I'm getting a bit nitpicky. I don't know, maybe. Um, but actually, sort of continuing on with the possible slight nitpicking. Um, again, I know it's not airside. You know, this is this is landside now. Um, you know, the the photo reel that we're actually using that it's all based off. Uh, from what I can tell, again, as I said, is late 2016 photo reel, um, possibly from Google uh, or Digital uh, Digital Globe. Um, again, it sort of uses as a decent base. Uh, some stuff, though, you know, they could have been a bit more accurate with the the way they're renditioning some of the buildings out here outside the airport terminal. Um, that could have been a bit better. What really could have been done a lot better. Uh, and I know this is again. People are going to say, "Oh, but you don't see it from from your tube liner, from your airliner, um, or you know, really even from your GA aircraft." But um, you know, like I said, yeah, this is the arrivals hall. Like this is the arrivals, you know, pick up, pick up, drop off sort of section. Um, that's dead. Like that's so dead. Like it's sort of like, yep, okay, cool. Um, and then the sort of dropping in and out of textures you know, that's really weird, like, you know, it's got the sort of, you know, protective thing there on that side, cool, can't see through it, yet if I go to this side, I can see through it, like, what the hell, like, I, I don't understand what happened to your 3D model in this one, like, what the hell happened to that, I don't understand, uh, very similar again with the walkways inside, uh, just, it just feels like they tried to do something and then what went, you know what, we just can't be asked, so we're just going to like, you know, pretend we did something um, and then just sort of like leave it and hope that nobody notices. Yeah. And probably a lot of people never would notice because they wouldn't look over this stuff. But to me, this kind of stuff is what separates mediocre, okay scenery from mind-blowingly like amazing scenery it really is uh, and unfortunately this one's really falling into the f like first category for me I it just is um, I, I just it, it's, there's too many points where I just get my my immersion my sort of like in the interest in it just gets broken um, by a lack of other stuff now. Yes, as I said, um, the advantage of this uh, is the fact that it's really good on frames. It's really easy on frames. It's a lot of repeated uh, autogen, a lot of repeated models and textures, uh, so you don't have that sort of, you know, multiple loads of stuff uh, that sort of keeps, uh, can kill a lot of sims and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it, it has its advantages there, but at the same time, it also is like, yeah, it just sort of like leaves a bit to be desired. It really does. Um, something is, you know, and something as simple as, for example, here, like this is the Four Seasons Hotel uh, at at the airport here. Like this is the the Four Seasons Hotel, and there should be like big logos and stuff on there, and there's not, and it's like, you know, okay, why? <laughs> 
Like, what, just why? I don't understand why you didn't include it. So, as I said, it's... You may say that they're small little things, and they are. They are small little things, but to me, if I'm going to be forking out a significant amount of money uh, for scenery, uh, especially considering that this is priced in the sort of upper end of the scenery price bracket for X-Plane 11 scenery, then I expect something, that, a product that goes with that. And quite frankly, this isn't delivering it. It's really not. Um, which is, as I said, such a shame because it's such an interesting airport uh, and an interesting part of the world that I really find it uh, a, a bit a, a bit of a shame that they've um, they just seem to have missed something here. Uh, they really have, and and things like something as simple as like you know integrate the the roadway here um, that we've got below us here, like integrate that into the 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 default vector data for um, X plane, like you know. The, integrate them together so you can actually take advantage of that. That would be something to me that would make sense and to do, but it just doesn't seem to be done. So, yeah, I, I just feel like something's just gotten missed here. It really has, and it's yeah, just a little frustrating. A little disappointing. Mm, anyway. Uh, Alright, so okay, so uh, that is the sort of look as I said, it's, it's, it's yeah, I, I can't fault the layout or anything like that, I can't fault it. Um, I'm just faulting the attention to detail, and uh, as I said, it possibly you know, may seem small and petty for some things, but at the same time, when you're paying you know fairly significant amounts of money for scenery, then you know I think that we should be able to expect um, the quality stuff and a couple of these you know omissions that we're seeing, uh, along with that lack of attention to detail, just really let it down. It it really does let it down. It it really does. It really does. All right, well, let's uh, now have a quick look at this uh, at night and see what it looks like in the night texture format. So in uh, the night texture format, um, it sort of comes to life uh, a little bit, um, just with fairly basic uh, baked night textures uh, for the terminal buildings, uh, the car park, uh, and the sort of the the, uh, the oil farm, the sort of fuel farm over in the edge there. Uh, uses uh, mostly de uh, mostly default lighting uh, for the X plane platform, so nothing really sort of uh, extraordinary there. Uh, looking, as I said, pretty okay. Um, the runway seems extraordinarily dark though. Um, I don't know if that's a thing, not having actually flown into this airport at night, so I sort of can't really give a, uh, a, a an impression on that one other than sort of just saying it just feels like it's a little dark. Uh, it really kind of does. Uh, beyond that though, as I said, pretty stock standard. Um, the uh, areas covered by the airport sort of outside of the actual airport itself um, just seem to be uh, just the basic sort of building baked textures, nothing uh, overly fantastic and overly special about that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of about it and you can sort of tell where the, uh, with the moving traffic over there, uh, where it all kicks off. So there you go, mm, yeah, pretty stock standard. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to head back over to, uh, we've got a uh, Cessna 172 here, which I've just uh, <laughs> hit the wrong buttons I've ended up inside. Uh, so we're going to be uh, switched back to daytime, and then we're going to go for a quick flight around the airport, uh, and we're going to uh, have a look have a look at the airport from the air, um, other than from an actual aircraft point of view, and we are also then going to have a look at the extent of the scenery, and another little sort of missed opportunity that I found with this scenery. All right, let's uh, adjust the date and time and start the aircraft. Alrighty, so here we are in the 172 back in the daytime again. So let's, as I said, let's uh, get ourselves uh, underway. All right, so first things first. Da -da 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 -da. Beautiful studding. Yes, yes, I did warm it up earlier. All right. Later on. Shouldn't need the pitot heat today. Put our landing lights on because we will be in the circuit. Get the Onyx buses on. Alrighty. Looking good. Okay. 
I'll just do a uh, midfield takeoff today. So as I said, we'll uh, we'll do a climb out and then uh, we'll do a quick sort of circuit around the field, and then we'll uh, have a look at some of the uh, areas around uh, that the extent of the scenery. So the scenery does sort of does cover a little bit of the region um, around the airport. Not a great deal though. Uh, as I said, it does cover a little bit of it, but not a huge amount. Um, but there is a really interesting sort of. Um, engineering sort of marvel. I, I do call it a bit of an engineering marvel uh, near that sort of like, like grants access to the uh, the airport um, that I, I think was I really for me it just seems like it was a real missed opportunity uh, for modeling what is one of the possibly the most spectacular and cool things um, about the the area surrounding this airport it really is anyway. Uh, yeah, th this is sort of where there was should, there should be another uh, hangar um, over there, according to the uh, latest data. So I think that that got missed, unfortunately. Uh, it was a bit of a again, as I said, a bit of a shame. Is it, is it like there's a lot of detail on here? Is it like I like the attention to detail on the the, the taxiway markings? Um, the the signs are really good quality. There's some great stuff, but then other things like the other sort of buildings uh, here at the airport um, uh, and the fact that you know that everything just everything just has a very stark, you know, not living feel to it, you know, um, and some weird things happen um, with the models. Uh, actually, I think you, you actually sort of see that sort of in front of us at the moment um, with that. The fact that you know it's, so some of the models sometimes go see through. Uh, some of the textures on the models go see through for no apparent reason. Um, don't really know why it just randomly does, and I'm like, uh, what the hell? So, yeah, a little weird, a little strange, but anyway. Uh, all right, okay, we are clear. No other traffic uh, around for us here, so let's, uh, we're going to uh, engage our one notch of flaps. Gonna taxi out to do a midfield departure. Everything looking good, instruments looking fine. Time for us to, uh, I'm not going to say light the tires and kick the, kick the tires and light the fires because, you know, we can't not go that fast. But uh, let us get ourselves <laughs> airborne in our little 172 here today. Keep it fairly low. We won't do a, a proper traffic altitude here. We'll, we'll keep it fairly low just so we can uh, see the ground. So as I said, um, it does sort of combine a bit of uh, photo real uh, sort of imagery, uh, including on some of the shorelines as well. So we'll just sort of do a, a left-hand sort of circuit here, uh, so we can see some of that as we go around. So it does as it combines some of the uh, photo reel of the surrounding area. Uh, so as I said, you do get some of the uh, surrounding townships um, as well, and uh, you sort of get this photo reel, which includes some uh, some boats down there. Um, so you know, again, could have been cool just to put a couple of 3D object boats on top of the photo reel. Like you've got the photo reel there already, you might as well put the you know some 3D object boats on top of it. You know, I just again a couple of the, these these little missed attention to detail opportunities that wouldn't have had a huge you know uh, impact on frame rates and wouldn't have had an impact on um, so you know development cost and development time that just for me just seem like real missed opportunities they really do so um, as we sort of sort of fly downwind sort of here you can see that as the the overall the overall from from altitude and from a lot of the time when you're flying over and flying to the airport I mean that's that's great it's definitely huge light years in front of what um, default was absolutely yeah, absolutely light years in front of what default um, 
is. But, as I said, it's these little attention details once you get close to the ground where I think it um, really loses something. It really does. Um, like, for example, you know, the, the extension of the, um, the the lights out into the water. Uh, it's sort of just done as like a straight bit of land instead of being as an actual sort of like these raised bits in the water um, to actually sort of put lights on. Now, speaking of which, this thing here. Now, this thing here looks like a glitch of vector data, doesn't it? Uh, having a highway in the middle of the ocean. Uh, in the middle of the, yeah, this, this middle of, this, the, of the water here. Actually, it's not. This is an actual thing. Um, this is an actual tollway that sort of uh, gives uh, high speed and quick access um, for both uh, passenger and sort of goods delivery and some pickup vehicles uh, to the airport and between the, the main city, city centres. Um, so it's a tollway, it's, it's, it's a fairly uh, a significant engineering project which is actually really, really cool. Uh, got a lot of history into it by the way, I'll pop a link to, the, uh, to, to a description like to a, 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 um, a map of it so you can have a look. Um, but to me, it, but and it has some fairly unique construction um, sort of things in it, and to me this would have been an absolute golden opportunity to sort of go. Let's grab some of the vector data. Let's integrate into XP uh, into Xplane, um, but let's do something cool with it. Like you know, let's let's model how it actually looks instead of this sort of just letting Xplane sort of do its default um, sort of thing in it, because it really looks kind of cool uh, in real life, and it's sort of like you know missed golden opportunity here. Uh, it's, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It just seems like this was a, uh, it would have been something simple to add in, uh, to, to make a custom model for this, uh, and you know, it, maybe not simple, but yeah, it wouldn't have taken too much extra to do, and it's because it is such an a iconic part of the region, for me, not putting it in is is almost a sin. Like it really is. It's almost a sin of not putting it in, and and it's really, as I said, for me, it kind of loses something um, when you, you lose out on opportunities like that. It, you really do. Uh, beyond that, uh, as I sort of said, it sort of uh, has a limited coverage of, uh, of, uh, of buildings and photo reel for the area. Um, it sort of stops around uh, around this part of here, as I said. It's got a, it's, it's got a fairly limited sort of um, set there. Um, they've sort of tried to stick reasonably close to what the photo reel underneath um, shows and sort of put some uh, various uh, buildings there. But as I said, it's a very limited range of buildings. It looks like they pretty much just use the, the default X-Plane um, content. Uh, maybe slightly regionalized, but yeah, nothing huge. Uh, and this is the boundary of the photo reel. And again, it's sort of just, just like right there. There's a bit of photo reel that you just didn't get populated. So it just feels like this was had. It just feels I, I, overall. I'm going to keep coming back to this. You know, if, if this add-on, like this airport expansion, just really for me, just feels like it's. It's just full of missed opportunities. Like it's, it's really how I feel about it. It's, it's got some really cool opportunities. Um, it's a fascinating airport. It's got some fascinating history. Um, it's got these cool sort of like you know regional features. Um, the approach uh, can be kind. It can be really breathtaking um, over the rainforest and as it coming over that um, that that engineering marvel of that uh, that sort of toll bridge over there. Uh, and then, you know, you're coming into a tropical paradise. So for me, there's sort of like, you know, all this really cool stuff they could have done. You know, and, and here we go. You're like, we've got an actual, like, you know, the, the proper mall, you know, logos are there. Why can't we put stuff like it is at the actual airport? Like, you know, why are we putting that and not this? Like, I just, I don't understand. And as I said, it just, for me, there just seems to be so many missed opportunities um, for this. There, there really are. Like, it seemed like it was... They got halfway through and then just went, oh, yeah, you know what, that'll do. That's near enough, that'll do. Um, again, flying over the beach here, we've got these options, you know, they've got all these, you know, photo reel, which includes all the boats on it. Just throw, like, a miniature 3D model onto it. You know, it really wouldn't have been that much of a deal to do it. I'm sure it would not have been that much of a deal to do it. You know, okay, I, I'll admit, you know, I, I've done a bit of scenery design, but I don't do 3D model production. I don't do it, so, you know, I can't... Ir 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 irrevocably say that you know it would be simple and easy to do but it just seems like you're going to go to the effort of putting a product out there and charging you know reasonable money for it then you should probably put the effort in and you know especially comparing it to some of the competition you've got so there you go all right so we're just going to do a uh, crosswind here so we can turn on to our uh, downwind and we'll uh, come in for approach and landing here uh, at uh, at the airport
I mean, as I said, it, it is light years better than the, the default. The default is, is rubbish. Like, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but, you know, it's a, it's an auto-gen, you know, default airport, so, you know, it's going to be better than that. Um, but, yeah, this, eh, as I said, maybe maybe I'm just spoiled by the, the amount of development that's gone into the ESP and, and uh, ESP sort of platforms over the years that I expect to see things that maybe I shouldn't expect to see in x -Plane. I don't know, but... That's the thing about when you're a cross-platform simmer. You sort of, you know, you see stuff in one sim that you don't see in another, and you, then you're like, wait, what? Why is that not happening? Oh, we're going to cut our... Uh, we're going to cut our short and our base sort of down a bit, I think. Slight overcorrection there. And it doesn't seem to sort of take as much advantage of the uh, the, the rolling sort of 3D sort of terrain as much as other airports do in X-Plane, so... Mm. The aircraft. Taxi over here to the uh, GA area. Okay, all right. All righty, let's go for a quick little spin around and uh, as we go through our final thoughts uh, for this add-on. So, uh, okay, so as I said, this has been Bali XP, uh, so from Aerosoft. So it's the original designs by uh, A-Flight uh, converted over to X-Plane by uh, Kafrana Games. Um, look, as I said, this is better than default. Absolutely far better than default. Um, it does give you all the current up-to-date charts that you need uh, for the airport. Uh, it corrects the airport runway length. It adds in the correct uh, um, the correct taxiways, parking positions, all that kind of stuff. Uh, most of the buildings, most of the airport buildings are present and correct uh, where they should be. So, uh, I mean, from that perspective, this is, you know, great. I feel though that overall there is just simply a lot of missed opportunity. There is a lot here that just simply feels unfinished. It feels like it's not quite there. I feel like that they've tried to do something, there's stuff that, that they've tried to implement or wanted to implement but just either it got too hard um, or it got technically too, you know, technically too hard for them to challenge to do or they ran out of time or I don't know. It just feels like there was so much that could have been done that just wasn't done. 
So I feel it's a bit unfinished. I mean, maybe we'll see it as a service pack or a, an update later on. I don't know. Um, but as I said, just for now, I just feel that um, it's okay, but I possibly wouldn't recommend it for getting at its current price tag. Uh, for coming in at 20, 25 euros, um, 25 euros, so 30 US dollars um, for, for this one, I just think it's a little overpriced for what you get. Uh, if that dropped, you know, twenty percent, you know, if you got it, you get it on like I say, a twenty percent off sale or something. Um, then you know what? I'd say get it because as I said it's got some really good stuff. As I said, the 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 overarching things that you need to say a tube liner pilot are perfect. They're great. Um, but the stuff that you're gonna, if you're a low and slow flyer, and as I said, just just so many missed opportunities here that I just feel that um, they just were lost uh, in this add-on. So there you go. Anyway, folks, if you, this has been my little review um, of uh, this uh, scenery, so this has been a Bali Airport Bali XP uh, from Aerosoft, uh, available now from the Aerosoft website or from your favourite flight sim retailer, uh, available now for X Plane 11, uh, and uh, I believe there is an X Plane 10 version available as well. But for now, it is uh, but definitely the X Plane 11. Uh, so thank you very. I want to say once again, thank you very much to the wonderful team over at Aerosoft uh, and Helisimmer.com for providing me with the review copy of this airport. Today to bring to you guys. Uh, all right, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this uh, little review. Um, you can also see a text version of this review uh, over at the helisimmer.com website. I'll put a link in the description down below. Head over there, have a look at that. And as I said, folks, um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Don't forget, as always, to like the video uh, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos. On, on, by Follow me on Facebook and on Twitter to search number wing 24 All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.